a whole bunch of privates have been telling their Mormons story after they got a nice file with the 4x6s even the cards to send back to their family to wallpaper the neighborhood when the Mormons are casing the neighborhoods and praying on their elderly and Jared says I don't know why you keep talking bad about the Mormons and Sarge is walking past and he says son do you know what happened in a, a Jonestown about 40 years ago do you want to be in Utah hauling out body bags because the false prophet got caught bilking little old ladies out of their life savings or who knows what else Check and post and file with the Mormons, hand these out, wallpaper your neighborhoods with them. But Jack is retired, and he saw a suspicious car in his neighborhood, and he called the cops up. He said, well, they're going up and down the street. It looks like they're casing the neighborhood. And, of course, the cops show up, uh, find that gray car, and... Uh, Jim J and uh, Charlie M, Mormon missionaries, uh, doing what they do, casing the neighborhoods and uh, preying on the elderly. And they're a little indignant, they're angry, uh, Jim and uh, Charlie. And they tell the cops, well, we're just, you know, doing missionary work for our religion. And yeah, the cops tell them, yeah, so was uh, Jim Jones and uh, Charles Manson. Uh, that didn't end well. I am Melton, son of a carpenter and Mary. Dad a carpenter, worked on skyscrapers. Mom Marianne, I'm the son of a carpenter. I get to tell parables and I did some Google research today. And I found out that my parable videos are making the rounds. You know how pompous if you ever had a knock on your door the Mormons can be. And last year, 2017, I made some funny parables about uh, their false prophet at the time, Manson. I said, I thought we got rid of that guy long ago, and he apparently had been making the rounds because just before Thanksgiving last year, uh, uh, Charles Manson died, and then after uh, just after the new year, they, they false prophet Manson kicked the bucket. And that's how I know, you know, my parables get around. I'll keep passing them along, guys. Michelle and Sharon are two Mormon church princesses, and they're looking after false prophet Manson. And he's looking after because he's well up into his 90s. He's half as old as the fraud of faith, LDS, Latter-day Sinners, the Mormon church itself. And Michelle says, a brother Manson. You haven't touched your food. He says, I'm not hungry. You haven't touched your Kool-Aid. I don't want to. And then uh, as Sharon says, look at this nice pillow I embroidered for you. I heart false prophet Manson. And he says, I, I can see it. And you don't have to bring it closer. I can see it. And uh, 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 Yeah, I made a, a, a couple of parables about have we never seen Charles Manson and uh, false prophet Manson of the church there in the same room and all of a sudden they died within a month and a half. Officer Jared has stopped by to see Mrs. Moneybags and she explains that these people keep knocking on her door. She doesn't answer but Sometimes she's out in her garden. She likes to work in her garden. She's an elderly lady with some beautiful flowers. And these folks are very arrogant and condescending and self-righteous. And she has told them, I, I'm a Catholic. I go to church when I can get a ride with my friends. I don't want to to be on your sales route and trouble is officer Jared is uh, one of those that they call when they're missionaries get in trouble from city to county state and he just uh, BS a little old lady 
The Mormons, the LDS, Latter-day Sinners, are in their men's meeting. Yeah, they're like their fraud of a faith sister religion, the Muslims. No gals allowed. And one of them says, you know, our missionaries are knocking on doors worldwide and they're asking, is it true Charles Manson is your false prophet? We're a laughing stock because of the son of culture, Mary Melton. And his parable videos. And Russell Nelson says, I know how to solve things. He's a heart doctor. So he's got a broom over his shoulder in a state hospital. And he has that little medical bag with him. And then he goes, oh, I'm not sure where the state hospital is. Then he goes back to Utah, and yes, Charles Manson dies uh, around Thanksgiving. And false prophet Manson dies around New Year's Day. And you guessed it, that heart doctor is the new false prophet. The general is having a strategy meeting. He's explaining how they will distribute the Mormons beware image as cards, as four by six photos, as bumper stickers, as t shirts. Across America to uh, churches, neighborhoods, civic organizations. And one of the colonels says, well, is that really necessary? I mean, they're just a, uh, a church trying to uh, do missionary work. And the general gives the colonel a, a mean look. And he says, well, so were uh, Jim Jones and Charlie Manson. And Utah's a whole lot bigger than uh, them and, yes, we're going to be the ones taking out the body bags. This video is set in the 70s, the 1970s, and as you know, the devil insists that the Mormons, the LDS, Latter-day Sinners, spend three long hours each Sunday worshiping him and his lies. And as part of that, they're kind of like their sister fraud of a faith, the Muslims, in that the women go off in their own little set there and talk about sewing and cooking, and, and the men talk about, you know, in their own place, important stuff. And as they're doing that this Sunday, in the 70s, a Gordon says to Tom, you know, it's shameful the way that the young people dance to Elvis's music. And Rob Russell says, I know how to solve the problem. He picks up his medical bag, he's a doctor, and they ask him, where are you going? They said, he says, to Tennessee. The Sarge is walking with his men. And they go in this huge warehouse full of body bags. And one of the privates says, Sarge, that Russian guy isn't getting us into something, is he? And Sarge says, oh, no, son, this isn't. This isn't for the military. This is in case those uh, uh, folks in Utah go Kool-Aid happy. You heard about uh, Charles Manson and false prophet Manson of the LDS, Latter-day Sinners, the Mormons. You heard about both of them dying within a month. If that doesn't, month and a half, I believe. If that doesn't tell you they're worried about the son of a culture and Mary and his truth about them, nothing will. But no, they're, no, they're not for us. False Mormon prophet Russell Nelson is conducting a tour with a reporter and a senator. And he says, I am sure once you talk to Mrs. Moneybags, You'll find she's here of her own free will. And just then, Charlie M. and a Jim J. run up to the false prophet and hand him a note that says Mrs. Moneybags does not want to be here. And he gets so flustered, the false prophet hands it to the note, to the senator, then quickly grabs it back and and it back to the missionary. Uh, yeah, guys.
Utah's a whole lot bigger than Jonestown. Mark has a problem most Christians have. They're too good for their own good. And he's talking to Harry. He says, I don't know about doing, distributing the Mormons beware to our flock. And then have them distribute in the neighborhoods and civic organizations. Uh, I don't know, they're just like a, they're a church just like us. Trying to promote the religion and Harry says no. They're a cult much bigger than Jim Jones and Charlie Manson. And we have to protect the true believers from them. So we're going to hand these out and they should. It's the late 60s and Russell Nelson, the current false prophet of the LDS, Latter-day Sinners, part of that title of Mormons, is out uh, knocking on doors with Jared and he comes to this one door and he says, you sure do have a whole lot of long-haired, long brown-haired gals around here. We got a cartoon Mormon Bible for each of them and all of a sudden the Charlie shows up he, they compliment him on that uh, that tattoo he's got above his uh, nose and he he says dig it man we don't want you around here you come around here one more time I don't know what I'm gonna do and of course uh, Russell says we'll be back back uh, next month. The false prophet Russell Nelson of the Mormon cult, the Latter-day Sinners, the LDS, he's sitting on his porch rocking and that's about all he can do because uh, he's up into his 90s. He's half as old as the Mormon's cult is. And he sees some younger fellows from the Mormons show up and he says, what's wrong? He's the son of a corporal Mary Melton making terrible videos about me. Oh, I make the funny stuff, the serious stuff. And I made it some about Charles Manson and the previous false prophet Manson. And uh, then it ended up with uh, both of them uh, dying at the end of 2017. And so Russell's a little nervous. He says, what's in the medical bag? He says, nothing. And Russell learned a thing or two from the Doomsday Cult. He's got his Nikes on. He outdistances the younger folks. Manson is a whining again. Why are they persecuting us? We, the Mormons, LDS, Latter day Sinners, proud of that title, were just trying to promote our religion. Why are they persecuting us? Oh, getting the truth out of you is not persecution. Look for those Mormons beware on the vote truth there, among other places. Print them out, wallpaper your neighborhood when you see them, the Mormons, case in your neighborhood. Meanwhile, as uh, Manson's hanging by his tail, uh, Jim Jones hanging right next to him by his tail says, yeah, well, Manson, so uh, was I, just trying to promote that religion. Then the devil comes along and you know, pokes both of them with a pitchfork. Jake is checking into a fancy hotel, and the clerk says, "Well, it's a really nice room, but there might be a little smoke damage." Nelson, I stayed in there last night. And Jake smiles. He says, Willie Nelson was in that room? And the clerk says, no. The false prophet. Russell Nelson. Yeah, the 90-something year old guy that's half as old as the fraud of the faith, LDS, Latter-day Sinners, proud of that title, the Mormons. They're very big smokers. You see them around here a lot, around me and the Great Wall of Evil. Let me explain some Great Wall of Evil tactics. They had the noise from down below from them. They're Mormon doggies to distract so I didn't take a 
a uh, a sunset photos and now for Tommy they're distracted. A Charles Manson that says, Does this thing have a file in it? And Jim J hands him some cake between the bars and says, Not exactly. Short time later, back in Utah. The false Mormon prophet, Manson, is being given some cake by Charlie M. LDS, Latter-day Center Missionary. And he's kind of old. He says, is it my birthday? And yes, uh, Jim J. says, not exactly. Then both of those missionaries go to see Russell Nelson, I say that Manson embarrassment is over with. You're the false prophet now. Russell Nelson is doing an, a rare interview. Yes, he's the false prophet of the Mormons. Well, they send his LDS, proud of that title. Doing an interview with Barbara and Connie. And he says, I don't know why they're persecuting us. We're just a, a simple religion. Yes, he's uh, half as old, literally half as old as his for all the faith Mormons up into his 90s. We're knocking on doors to uh, promote our faith. And the yeah, county says, well, so was Jim Jones and Charles Manson. And a lot of folks don't like in case in their neighborhood where they're hard at work and the only ones there are the elderly you're preying on. So Frank is at boot camp. And it's the usual stuff. Uh, obstacle cores, disassemble, reassemble, rifles and other things. But he has Sarge about the new things, things he hasn't seen. It's yeah. Loading uh, body bags onto trucks. And uh, Sarge explains well, it's the Mormons. They're much bigger than Jim Jones and the. Uh, and that and uh, Charles Manson were much bigger and. Yeah, we want to be prepared when they start passing out that Kool-Aid. Charles M. calls Jim J. into the room. They're both Mormon, LDS, Larry Day Center missionaries. And Jim J. says, where'd you dig him up? And Charlie says, oh, the Mideast. I thought we could use some fresh blood at the top of a fraud of a faith and uh, uh, Jim J says but he's just uh, a skeleton I know but he, he does look more lifelike than Russell Nelson the current false prophet and what's that in his hand it's a gold coin oh my dad they have dug up Judas and as they try to take that gold coin out, the devil puts bless on that new false prophet. Two people are walking through a wilderness, and one says to the other, Did you ever think about joining the Mormons, you know, becoming an LDS, Larry Day Center? And the other one laughs this kind of maniacal Chinese laugh. And he says, oh no. Those Mormons are a dangerous cult. Not like us. They're desperate. They're bizarre. They're off in their own little world. Then Jim Jones, Jim Jones says, uh, let's go meet that senator and reporter. Remember to hand out uh, these to protect the Christians, the flock. 
from the Mormon wolves, the devil.